um, and welcome to my first ever floss tube video. I cannot believe I'm saying that. <laughs> it is the 3rd of January, it's a Sunday, and it is 4.38 p.m. Unfortunately, it is already dark outside, <laughs> um, so sorry about that, but I can't really close the curtains over the bookshelf, so <laughs> it is the way it is. Um, so yes, this is my first ever floss tube video. Um, I apologize if I'm looking down at any point. I have notes in front of me to try to keep me on target, um, at least for this first video. I'm sure in the future I'll go on various tangents. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to follow more of like a traditional floss tube format for this first video. So I figured I would go through a little intro about me um, and like the know your needle worker tag. Um, and then I'll talk about how I started stitching, um, my like history of stitching. And then I thought I'd do some past FFOs, um, finishes that I haven't quite fully finished yet, um, my whips, and then haul, and then um, plans for this channel and for 2021, um, and all that jazz. So starting with the introduction, like I said, my name is Evelyn. I'm 25 years old. Uh, and the first question in the new <laughs> your needle worker tag, um, which by the way, I'm getting this from I think it's whimsy daysical. I'll put a link to it in the description below. So the first question is, where do you live? So I live in Cambridge, England, in the UK, um, which is why it is dark because it's winter here. <laughs> and winter in the UK means that the sun goes down starting at like 2.30 in the afternoon. Cambridge is a, like a smaller city. It's like it's like a city town city kind of thing so there's enough to do that it's like a city you know there's lots of shops there's lots of restaurants you, there's a lot of activities <laughs> um but it's not so big that it ever feels too much like a city like you can walk around in the streets and have no one be in them um there's a lot of green space we have Midsummer Common, Jesus Green. It's a very beautiful city. Obviously, the university is here. I love it here. <laughs> it's a great place to live. Um, and it's really my kind of style, sort of that a mixture of rural with also things to do. Um, because as you might have guessed, I'm not actually British. I'm American. Um, I grew up for the most part in Roanoke, Virginia. Um, although I was originally born in Iowa, in case anyone wonders why I don't have like a fully Southern <laughs> accent. Roanoke is in the Blue Ridge Mountains, if you've ever heard of like the Appalachian Mountains or anything. But that also is kind of like a, a rural city <laughs> sort of a vibe. So it's similar to how it is here. And also on the outskirts of Cambridge as well, there's like the fens and everything. So if you walk, you know, just a little bit outside of town, you're in Grandchester Meadows or Fenditon and you're walking along the River Cam and it's very beautiful and um, picturesque and everything. So yeah, so I'm kind of like a, a non-city girl living in a, in a semi city, <laughs> um, which kind of goes into the, the second question in the tag, which is, what do you do for a living? Um, which explains why I'm here. <laughs> so I am a PhD student in early American history at the University of Cambridge, hence why I live in Cambridge. Basically, not to go too much into detail because I don't want to bore people <laughs> with my research, but um, I study the politics of material culture in the early American Republic, which is like right after the American Revolution. Um, and material culture is basically a field of study that believes that you can learn as much about the past from objects and what people left behind and what they made and things like that as you can from writing that they left behind like books and diaries and letters. And so I am interested in the way that early Americans began to understand their relationship to the nation in the early republic through their relationship with um goods and objects and um things like that so like samplers um 
all kinds of different things but I'm sure samplers is the part that would be interesting to other stitchers so yeah so that's what I do obviously this past year has been weird to do a PhD in <laughs> but um I've been essentially working from home since March 20th 2020 <laughs> so almost a year um and I usually spend my days in zoom seminar meetings reading books writing chapters I'm currently working on the second chapter that I've written but it'll be the first chapter of the PhD um, that starts in full earnest tomorrow morning when I'm done with my Christmas vacation and uh, my partner who I live with his name is Nico he also <laughs> was in my PhD program he's now finished he he has his PhD um, and he's a postdoc here at Cambridge which is basically like a research position that you have after you finish your PhD, but before you start applying to professorships. Um, a lot of people use it to like work on writing their book or to kind of tide them over until they get get hired as a full professor. And so we live together um, here in Cambridge. Um, we live in the northern part of the city and we moved into this place literally the day before lockdown started in March. <laughs> so we've been in the house probably, what is that, like almost 10 months or something. Um, so a while. We're going to live here until the end of his postdoc, which will be a bit past the end of my PhD. I still have almost two years left. I'm in my third year, but the beginning of third year. Yeah, our house is really cute. It, <laughs> it's like a little two-bed cottage type townhome thing. I don't, I don't really know how else to describe it. But yeah, I'm filming from the second bedroom, which we use as the office. Um, but it's really cozy. It's a nice first place for us to have. And, you know, in the difficulties of a year not going outside, <laughs> having, like, building our house together, like, and by building, I mean, like, decorating and getting comfortable and all of that um has been a good distraction along with my stitching which is <laughs> the point of this channel the third question is do I have any children um I do not have any children yet um we are still in kind of like a precarious position in our lives just because I'm you know I'm still in the PhD when I finish I'm gonna be applying to postdocs and things like that um you know Nico doesn't have like a full professorship or tenure yet um which is normal <laughs> but um it's just academia tends to be a bit precarious for your first few years until you finally land that kind of tenure track position and obviously the market is very bad right now so it wouldn't necessarily <laughs> be a good idea for us to start having kids at the minute um but we do want children um probably like five or so years down the line um but yeah no you won't be seeing any <laughs> any little Evelyn babies running around that goes into the next question which is do you have any pets I do not have any pets um I've never actually had a pet fun fact I guess I think my mom was allergic to cats she had had dogs growing up and so had my dad but we never really had enough like yard space for a dog so my mom felt bad it, like she would have felt bad if we got, got a dog and it couldn't really run around also my parents worked um and obviously like I was at school and things like that so there wasn't really anyone to watch the dog if we had gotten a puppy and anything like that and my mom kind of thinks <laughs> like critter kind of pets are creepy so um yeah we just I never had a pet but now that I'm like in my adult stage and like setting up a house and everything like that I really 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 want to get a cat I want a cat so bad <laughs> I want a kitty <laughs> um but our tenancy agreement because we're, we're renting this place um is basically like on pain of death y you will not have a pet so we'll have to wait <laughs> until we eventually move or negotiate <laughs> with our landlord or something to let me have a pet but yeah Nico I know eventually wants to have dogs he had dogs growing up but he also had a cat so he is keen to have a cat <laughs> in addition um so yeah, no pets yet, but I really want a cat is the review on number four. Number five is what are your hobbies um, other than stitching? So I have a couple. 
One would be video games and board games. I love playing video games and board games um, with my partner alone, whatever. I just, I've, I've always loved playing games. In the past few years, and like my family really enjoys playing games as well. So this was like a childhood thing that I still like now. Um, my family in the past few years has gotten into the more hardcore board games. Um, you know, we've graduated from Life and Monopoly and things like that, even though I still love those. But um, for Christmas, Nico got me a game called Near and Far. I'll I'll link it. I, I don't know if people are interested in board games, but um, other than Sean. Hi, Sean, if you're watching. Near and Far is basically like a tabletop RPG, sort of like if Catan and Dungeons and Dragons like had a baby. That's kind of what Near and Far is like. So we've been playing that recently. Um, you can play it either as a campaign, so like you'd play multiple sessions and have it be one story, or you can play it as just like one-off sessions. We've been doing the campaign just because we've been enjoying it, but um, so that's a board game I'm playing right now. And then video games. Um, what games have I been playing recently? I play a lot of Animal Crossing. <laughs> we've been playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, also I really like Stardew Valley. I don't know if anyone plays that, but the new update just came out. So I've been playing that a lot. Um, so yeah, I like games. Um, another one of my hobbies is stamp collecting. So I, I do collect stamps. I don't have any of my stuff with me here in England. <laughs> um, at the minute it's still at my parents' house. My grandmama got me into stamp collecting. She also got me into cross stitch, but we'll talk about that later. She has a huge stamp collection. Um, and when I was probably about like 10 or so. I was watching her one day organize her stamps and put them into the album and I said that I thought that was so cool because it was like it was a piece of history and and everything like that and I wanted to do it and she was like you have to promise me if I get you this stuff to do this <laughs> that you won't quit in like a day <laughs> and I didn't. I actually stuck with it so um when I was when I was younger and I used to have like sleepovers at my grandmama's house we would sit and we would stamp together and things like that. So I have a pretty big collection of US stamps. Any um, duplicates that she had, she would give to me to put into my albums. So I actually have quite a big collection for someone my age, just because of my grandmama um, and her help and everything like that. A huge bulk of it from like, maybe like the, the 50s to the 80s. But recently, or well, a, a couple of years ago now, um, I've tried to start a world stamp collection but that's still in its very early stages and like I said I haven't gotten a chance to bring it over to the UK yet so um hopefully I will be able to do more stamp collecting again in the future and then as for other crafts I've recently started to learn how to knit I will show a little bit of knitting later on in the video I also am trying to learn how to sew, um, which I will also talk about later, but I really do like crafty things. I've always liked making things. So those are kind of my hobbies. Obviously also like reading, watching TV, hobbies that everyone has. I like to eat, <laughs> also something everyone has. So yeah. Number six is what's your favorite movie? Um, my favorite movie is The Princess Bride. Has been since I was like three. I love that movie. <laughs> it is so funny. I can quote the entire thing during it I could probably tell you the lines with my eyes closed just watching it <laughs> yeah I love Princess Bride it's the perfect blend of action movie romance comedy it's just a true classic if you haven't seen the Princess Bride you have to and honestly I'm about to link that <laughs> in the description below next question favorite tv show Ooh, probably Gilmore Girls um, I don't know if my fellow 20-somethings also have their favorite show be Gilmore Girls, but I just love Gilmore Girls. We've been re-watching it because Nico hadn't seen it before and I was like, you have to see Gilmore Girls. Um, and he does like it. I guess this is my fourth time watching it all the way through and it's just comforting. In some ways, Stars Hollow feels like your home too. Um, anyway, if you haven't seen Gilmore Girls, it, it is a good one. Uh, favorite book? My favorite book, well, I have two answers. So my favorite standalone book is probably To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, just because, well, I mean, one, it's a classic, but two, every time I've reread it, I feel like I learn something different from it. 
and I also feel like the book changes a bit as you age while reading it so the way that I interpreted it as like a middle schooler when I read it for the first time versus how I feel about it now is different and I think that you know that's the sign of a true classic book is that you get something new out of it when you revisit it um but then my favorite book series is without a doubt hands down Harry Potter has always been will always be <laughs> I cannot imagine a time in which my favorite thing would not be Harry Potter I basically I mean one of the first things I ever read was Harry Potter um I think my mom brought home Sorcerer's Stone uh well for my British friends Philosopher's Stone um probably I think I had like just turned five or something like that and she said that she wanted it to be a thing that her and I did together where she would read to me she did all the voices um and then that year the first movie came out um and then so what was this like 2001 2000 something like that what's funny is that I started to kind of learn how to read <laughs> um more serious kind of chapter books during this time so the first one she read to me fully the second one I read the final chapter to myself because I had gotten to that place the third one I read probably like three quarters of it myself and then the fourth book is the first one that I ever read like just a hundred percent on my own my mom didn't read any part of it to me and so by that point I was like eight and that book is like 500s some pages long I mean I think I learned to read like younger than when Harry Potter came out but those were books like I am Barbie <laughs> so this is like the first real story that I experienced myself and I just oh, I love Harry Potter but you will see that later because I have some Harry Potter finishes the next question we are getting to the end of the questions sorry I realized this has been like 20 minutes of me just answering these questions so the ninth question is what's your favorite music I like most music um, genres, but I will say my favorite is probably like 1990s alt rock, <laughs> which is a bit niche, but I think it's just because that's what I listened to growing up. That's what my parents would have on in the car. Um, you know those memories that you have that are just absurdly distinct? I have a distinct memory of my mom taking me and my sister to target very early in the morning on the day that matchbox 20's third album it was pouring down rain just so that we could get a copy and then we drove around in the car for hours going nowhere just to be able to listen to all the songs because that's where our radio was was in the car trying to learn them all and learn the new lyrics so we could all sing together and it's just those that's one of my memories from my childhood that's like like just a pure kind of memory so yeah I really like like 90s alt rock kind of 90s classics one word to describe myself oh I hate these kind of questions I'm like never good at describing myself maybe maybe like determined because I feel like once I set my mind to learning how to do something or to trying something new or something like that um I usually do it things that I care a lot about I try to make happen whether that's like moving to another country or cross stitching again, learning how to knit, that kind of thing. The last question, and this kind of gets into the purpose for this channel and the rationale is like, who inspired you to start making floss tube? Um, I have a couple of answers. So I think I initially found floss tube in maybe May or June of this year in quarantine. I was actually looking for a tutorial on how to cut floss like for thread organizers because I'd never done it that way before. I had just used it off of bobbins and I wanted to try it that way to see if I liked it and if it was faster or whatever. And I came across a tutorial by Crafty Gaming Jamie um, on how to do that. And I realized in the title that it's, it was like floss tube number, whatever number that was for her. Um, <laughs> sorry, Jamie, I don't remember. And I was like, what's floss tube? Is there a whole cross stitch part of YouTube? And the answer was yes, <laughs> loads of it. Um, and then I basically became addicted to, to floss tube. I love watching it when I'm stitching and just being able to share the hobby with other people. Um, and so I think once I had really found floss tube, that was when I first kind of became interesting, 
in maybe making a floss tube and participating in the community. Um, and I saw a video by Rocio, uh, Coco Hamas to Tree, um, talking about, you know, like how would one make a floss tube basically. Um, and one of the things that she said was that you need to have your why, you know, why is it that you want to make a floss tube? And I sat and I thought long and hard about why is it that I wanted to make one. And honestly, I think it's that I just want to be a part of this community, make friendships, share something that I love with other people who also love the same thing. 2020 has been a very hard year. Um, obviously now we're looking into 2021. We don't know what's going to happen this year. Um, but I think last year, you know, there were two real things that got me through. One was Nico and the second was stitching. Um, and the fact that I've heard so many people say that they feel the same way, that it's helped them with their anxiety, that, it, you know, it gave them a sense of community and hope and happiness during a time where not a whole lot of that is going around. And I don't know, it just meant a lot to me to hear that because I felt the same way. And so I started a cross-stitch Instagram account, um, Evelyn Across the Pond. I'll like put it uh, on the screen. I'll spell it because it's like A-X the pond, but it's across because I was trying to be clever. And so I started talking to people a bit that way, um, which was great to get, get a piece of the community. But I feel like with Instagram, I always want to talk to you a lot more than I can actually do in an Insta post without it being annoying. <laughs> And with a YouTube video, I can really, you know, say what I think and feel. And I'm so looking forward to seeing people's comments and interacting and, you know, reacting to other people's videos. And yeah, I think it's just that I want to be a part of the community. But me just knowing that I wanted to do that is different than actually sitting down to start making a video. So the person who really inspired me in that sense is Sean, um, Craftivating Creations on YouTube. She's lovely. Over the past few weeks, Sean and I have been DMing quite a bit over on Instagram and just have become fast friends, honestly. And I mentioned to her that, you know, I had been interested in making a channel, but you know, that I was scared, basically. Um, and Sean really encouraged me and, you know, offered to help me with, you know, figuring out how to upload and all kinds of things like that. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be making this right now. So thank you, Sean. <laughs> I also should thank my partner for encouraging me and my sister as well. Um, and actually, now that I mentioned my sister, my sister is a, a many different medium artist. She's an actress, she's a poet, she, um, she paints, she draws, she's a graphic artist. Um, and because this is like a crafting channel, I just wanted to shout out my sister Gwyneth, I love you. Um, and I thought I would show you just really quickly some things that she's made for Nico and I. So first up for my birthday, she took this picture of Nico and I from one of our friend's weddings and she turned it into a line drawing. I don't know if you can, oh, the lights, no, no, no. Um, so there's me, there's Nico. Um, but isn't this just beautiful? And the detail, I don't know if you can see. Oh, she's just so talented. So she does a lot of these on commission. And then for Christmas, she made us this painting, which is beautiful. And it's, it has a lot of like hidden meanings. Like for example, here's a early American woman stitching. So this is me, <laughs> you know, here's hands. Um, this is a person thinking, so this is supposed to be like Nico in his PhD. <laughs> um, these are buildings here in Cambridge. Um, and all of these are the colors that are in our living room. Um, so she made it like perfectly to match. Um, and she's just so talented. Um, oh, tulips. Those are curtains and my rug has tulips on it. And actually one of my whips also has tulips on it. I kind of like tulips. So yeah, anyway, my sister, um, you should check her out. I'll link her Instagram below. She has a Redbubble. She has an Etsy shop. So yeah, check her out. Support her. Give her some love. She has beautiful, beautiful artwork. Okay, I think I'm finally through the Know Your Needle Worker tag. <laughs> 30 minutes. Wow, this is gonna be a long video. Okay, so I guess I should get down to the nitty gritty, which is how I started stitching. So I first learned how to stitch when I was probably like 
I don't know, like 11 maybe. Um, but I've only been seriously stitching like continually every day since probably about May of 2020. I am also another quarantine stitcher. <laughs> Um, but I basically went from 0 to 60 in 3.5. Like, I picked up one project, and then next thing I knew, I was on linen. Like, I had, I really, uh, escalated quickly. But, yeah, I did probably, I think my first ever stitch, I don't have it with me, because Lord knows where that is, but it was, like, a little Christmas elephant ornament that had, like, holly on it, um, that my grandmama gave me. I don't think it was a kit. I think she like kitted it up for me with the Ada and the DMC. You know, she's the one that got me into stamp collecting, but my grandma also has a lot of other kind of crafting hobbies. So she latch hooks, so she makes rugs. Um, my great grandmama, Evelyn, who I'm named after, she also latch hooked, she also cross stitched. Um, and she passed it on to my grandmama, who then passed it on to my mom. My mom has made samplers before. Um, my mom is very crafty. She sewed a lot of my clothes when I was little. Um, she actually made me these earrings for Christmas. They're like clay. Um, she also made them for in these co in this color. So my mom is also crafty. And then there's me. So yeah, anyway, grandmama gave me my first project. Um, and she actually did it and gave it to me because similarly to the stamp collecting story, um, I was watching her stitch on one of the cooler design Christmas stockings, which are the stockings that we have had in my family basically my whole life. Um, I know Liz, Elizabeth Ankin Stitch, made them for her um, and her partner over the summer, and they're beautiful. Um, and I was watching my grandmama make one for my stepdad um, after my parents had gotten married, my mom and my stepdad, so that he could have one to like match all of the rest of ours. And I remember watching her and I was just mesmerized by how tiny the crosses were, how beautiful they were, all the colors. And I think I had the flu at the time. So grandmama was over watching me while my mom was at work. Um, and she was there. I was so sick. I was sick for like two weeks or whatever. So I was just watching her stitch that whole time. And you know, I had seen the pictures up in her house that, um, grandmama Evelyn had made that she had made after probably like a couple of days of watching she asked me if I wanted a, a, a try and so she gave me like a little like a little line <laughs> it was like go this way a couple times and then this way a couple times and everything um and then yeah then she got me my my first little ornament I made quite a few of them and then I guess it kind of dropped off a bit in high school. I feel like a lot of people have this same kind of story. Um, I didn't really come back to it in college. Maybe I did like the one-off kit. I can't fully remember. And then this spring during COVID, um, I basically was like, I have to have something to do that is not my PhD because I'm going to lose my mind. And my friend Natalie, hi Natalie, if you're watching, um, she was doing a cross stitch kit that she had got from Caterpillar Cross Stitch, um, the one that's like the world map. And she was like, I've been really enjoying it, mate. Maybe you should try, you know, to get back into it. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, I used to stitch. I love stitching, you know, or whatever. And so then I got my first little pattern off of Etsy and I basically hit the ground running. <laughs> But before I start showing you my past FFOs, which will include that um, first pattern that I did, I wanted to show you one piece that I have that my grandmama made me just to like honor my grandmama. So this is um, what <laughs> featuring my command strips. Um, this is a piece that my grandmama made for me when I graduated from college. Um, so it says, do not go where the path may lead go instead where there is no path and leave a trail, um, which is uh, an Emerson quote. Um, and then she put my name and class 2017, William and Mary. And the the colors of William and Mary, um, which is where I went to college, it's in Virginia, is green and gold. So, so that she added like ivory and everything. And she signed here. So that's my grandmama um, and this is something that she made for me and this hangs up here in my office by my diploma. <laughs> so yeah, it just meant a lot for me that she stitches for me and so yeah, I wanted to share it. Okay, let's go through my past projects. Okay, so the first 
um, pattern that I got off of Etsy when I got back into stitching this spring was, I think it's called London, maybe, by Awesome Pattern Studio. Um, and it's one of their cityscapes. So this is, well, I don't have the non-reflective glass because I like, I finished all of these myself because I didn't really have access to finishing services <laughs> during, <laughs> during lockdown. And also I kind of liked giving it a go. Um, I followed a lot of Elizabeth Ankin stitches tutorials for how to pin basically how to how to do this so this is on 16 count white ada with all the called for dmc except for this orangey color um because it was supposed to be a shade more red but all of those were sold out because it was like quarantine buying and there was no dmc anywhere so this is the color that i could get <laughs> but yeah so there this was sort of my re re-entry into cross stitch it's not perfect at, at all i've gotten much better since this but it's special to me because it's like the first thing that got me back into it and once i did this pattern i was absolutely hooked i was like i have to do every stitch forever so yeah so this is this is the first one and i will link all of the patterns that I mentioned below as long as I can like find them um but I want to make sure that I'm giving designers their credit so in case you wanted to find them so then the next pattern that I did once I had finished that was this Hogwarts pattern but I love this because it was largely full coverage honestly and I just love the shading on the bill I don't know if you can see but like the shade all of the this is like six different grays or something like that um this is all the called for DMC and I also really liked that it was like a circle finish and so I tried a circle frame and I'm really happy with it um it hangs in the hallway here right next to me uh, alongside my Daniel Radcliffe autograph that I got uh, outside of one of his movie sets one time if you want me to tell that story let me know also I have a like a little owl and stuff. Um, anyway, it, I've decided it's my Harry Potter wall. <laughs> so yeah, eventually I want to do a pattern that's like the full coverage of all the books. Um, Aaron to Martini Stitcher is doing that and it's just beautiful. But anyway, so eventually I want to have a full Harry Potter wall, but right now it basically just has this and my signal Radcliffe. But yeah, I just love this pattern. It's beautiful. Um, and it was definitely a level up I think from the previous one just because the sheer amount of stitches um, in this but this is also on 16 count white data and just DMC so this is a pattern by tango stitch which I'll link below I think they have their own website rather than like an Etsy shop I think I found it off of Pinterest and then I followed the link and whatever um but anyway I think it's just called kitchen or something like that I'm not sure it, it has a proper name to the pattern but it hangs up in my kitchen and it is just some utensils um in this pretty little vase this is also 16 count i framed it myself i got this off of amazon i got the mount off of amazon as well because i thought basically it was going to be a whole lot of white <laughs> if i didn't get a mount um and i thought that it really brought out Kind of, it, and it almost kind of blended the color of this um, Turner and the slotted spoon, I guess. Um, so yeah, I thought that was really pretty. Ah, oh, it was just fun looking at all my stitches again. Okay, yeah. So anyways, so this hangs in the kitchen. Um, and after I finished this project, I kind of decided that I wanted to start trying to work on linen and even weave. Because as much as I... Ada is fine and I like Ada um sometimes I felt like I don't like seeing the holes it went when it's finished um but I was scared to try <laughs> even weave and linen just because I was like oh maybe that's like too advanced for me or whatever but after I'd finished this one and it was like my third project within two months that I had finished um yeah like I said I went hardcore there at the beginning one of the ones that I started when I started getting into even weave and stuff like that was actually Hello Dear Caterpillar Cross Stitch. I know everybody is uh, talking about this all over the place, but I'm so happy to have mine finished. So I will show you. Here she is. Oh, I just love this pattern. 
I cannot wait to do all of the trees that Sally's putting out. Um, I'll talk about that more in plans, but look at that. So this is on 28 count, just white Zweigart, I think, um, even weave. And then I used all the call for DMC. This was a mystery stitch along bleh, from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. So we got... I think it started in September or whatever and I ordered it after I saw the first release because I was like I thought I wanted it from the previews but I'd never done a sal before and I was a bit like oh I don't know and then I saw the first part of the tree over here and I was like oh okay sign me up <laughs> like it was a it was uh no this part sorry I'm like it's I understand now why people are like it's kind of hard to point at things when you're looking at yourself but anyway um yeah, I saw this Robin and I was like, okay, sold. I got it. So, and I did really, I feel like I was actually, you know, not to pat myself on the back, but I was pretty proud at how I kept up to speed with this sal. Um, whereas one of my other sals that you see later, I am not at all up to speed on. <laughs> but yeah, um, and I've just finished this flat with some uh, hand-dyed mini pom-poms by XG Designs off of Etsy. Um, and the, the DMC number that this is listed as is actually a direct mix of these two as she lists on the thing. And I was like, oh my god, I need that. So yeah, so I think it, it matches perfectly. And this sits, um, I'm going to keep it up for all of winter even though the there is Christmas elements of it because I'm obsessed with it and I need to have it. I have it sitting on this little easel that I got off of Etsy. So just like... Uh, I can't really do it while I'm here, but essentially imagine it like this. Um, and it sits on our bookcase downstairs. And then my plan is to put the rest of the trees in the easel and then like swap them out for the seasons. So, so yeah. And I'm just really pleased with this. Like, oh, I just love it. Okay. God, I finished a lot of things over Christmas. I finished like five things over Christmas. So I have a lot to show. Um, I think next I made these for our stockings, these little like dangles. Um, these are from a pattern by Tiny Modernist um, called Cozy Critters. There are, I think there's four animals in the pattern, but I just decided to do two, one for me, one for Nico, um, that were like our two favorites of them. And I got this out of basically... Mama Loves You GB here on Flosstube, Michelle, um, she told everyone about Readly several months ago um, and I went and looked into it and immediately got a subscription. <laughs> so basically um, you get access to a bunch of magazines like of all kinds but in what is relevant to us cross stitching magazines. Um, so like Cross Stitcher, The World of Cross Stitching, Just Cross Stitch, um, I think maybe one or two other ones. And basically you can like bookmark charts that you like or whatever and then you can return and stitch like on it just looking at the chart in your phone or whatever um or on your ipad which is what i do or you can do what i think michelle does where you can like screenshot them and print them out and everything like that um but i love readly it's the best i think it's it's like 7.99 a month but totally worth it so anyway so i got this off of readly the pattern and so here's my stocking, which is just, I just got these stockings off of Etsy um, because eventually I'm going to stitch me and Nico our own versions of the cooler design stockings to have here in the UK. But for right now, this was what I had to do for this quarantine Christmas. So, um, but I made these little dangles. So this is the one for me. It's a little penguin. Um, and I did this on perforated paper. Jesus. Um, yeah, perf paper, <laughs> um, on just white Mill Hill, I think is the, the brand that I used for it. Um, and then I've just finished it with some like felt that kind of matches the linen, um, and some gold and white baker's twine. And it just hangs like that. And then the one for Nico is the polar bear, because that's the one he liked. <laughs> Um, oh, and of course it's flipped itself around. So yeah, this is a little polar bear. Look at this little sweater. <laughs> oh, I can't. It's too cute. So yeah, and I've just finished it the exact same way. 
So yeah, so those hang on the bookcase above the Hello Dear um, because we don't have a fireplace in our house. So I just hung everything from the bookcase. Let's get crazy. Next up, I have yet another Christmas finish. I really went ham over Christmas, guys. I really did. Um, So this is, I think it's just called Nutcracker by Frosted Pumpkin Citry. And I got this off of Readly as well. Um, I'll put what exact magazine issue it was. So here is, it is, and I made it into a little pillow. And look how cute. I this is one of those ones where I saw this pattern and I was like I immediately have to have this I like saw it ordered all the DMC <laughs> um, and it's just oh god I love it so this is all the called for um and then I've used the Krynik which was also called for so this is the first time that I've used Krynik um in addition to my other Krynik piece that I will show in one minute I stitched these at the same time um and it's just so cute. Oh god, I just love them. I can't wait to do more of the Frosted Pumpkin um, ornaments. Oh, that's what this is called. Nutcracker ornament. That's the name of it. Um, I can't wait to do more of their ornaments for next Christmas. They're just so damn cute. I just love them. Finish this as a pillow. This is just some backing fabric that I kind of thought maybe looked like these holly things. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Not exactly, but um, I'm still waiting actually for... I ordered some um, Lady Dot Creates chenille trim in peony i think from cross stitch express off etsy but they're in texas so it's gonna be a while until it gets here um due to the state of international mail due to covid which i completely understand people are working very hard you know it's fine but anyway whenever that comes that will go around here and i can show that then and i finished this with one of the things that i got for haul which i will show later um for christmas but I, oh, and I followed, I just wanted to mention this because it was really good advice. Michelle, Mama Loves you, GB, she mentioned in one of her recent-ish videos, maybe one of the Flossmas videos, um, about when you finish little pillows like this, to make sure that you leave an extra three quarters of an inch seam allowance past the like quarter inch that is for the actual sewing part to make sure that once you stuff the pillow, your stitching will actually be on the front of it rather than like bent up over the sides. Cause if you think about it, if you only left like a quarter of an inch, it's gonna start looking like this. Um, and I followed that advice and I'm so happy that I did. It looks perfect like this, like, cause this is exactly what I wanted, right? For you, like the frame to be visible on all sides. So yeah, so this is my little nutcracker and I love him. And I'm gonna be very sad to put him away, alas. I have not yet put Christmas away because the thought of it makes me sad. So yeah. And I guess before I show my final finish, or well, fully finished object for 2020, I will show this little badge that I made. Um, this is a free pattern by Ink Circles. I think it's just called I Voted. Um, I'll tag it below. I heard about it from Liz, Elizabeth Ann can stitch. I know she made one and then I kind of copied her. I stitched this while waiting for election results during the, you know, two week long um, US election. And I've just finished it with a bit of blue felt and hot glued this to it, which you can kind of see, I don't know, maybe in the future I'll figure out a way to do that. That's a bit less obvious, but whatever, it works. Yeah, and I did this on um, 32 count white, Belfast by Zweigart. Um, and I think I used 311 and 321 DMC. But yeah, just used my stash. So I'm gonna wear this on inauguration day. Yay. Okay, so now for my last Christmas related finish. This is Santa's Coming or Soaring Santa. It, it has a different name on Etsy versus what was in the magazine version which is the version that I stitch but this is by Stitcherobia oh my god I just love looking at this it's just oh this is 28 count just white <laughs> from Zweigart I think I just even weave oh I just love it and so this is all the call for DMC except the all of the like magic squirrels and stars and stuff is supposed to be in this color right here, which is DMC 680. But instead I used the Krynik, the same Krynik 
that I used on the Nutcracker. So this plus Nutcracker was my first chronic stitching. And I just really love the effect that the metallic gives. It's not like short. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, I just love it. Mm. So it's like Santa and the reindeer. And I don't know if you can see, but this front one has a red nose because it's weird. Get it? Oh, it's so cute. But yeah, anyway, I love this pattern. I love Stitch Rovia's designs, especially the way that she, Emma Congdon is the person behind Stitch Rovia, the way that she does shading on like buildings and stuff like that is just beautiful. Like the, oh, like look at all this shading here in the snow because the way that the sun would be shining would cause a shadow. Oh, it's just beautiful. I just love this. Yay. And so I've just finished this in a frame I got off of Amazon for like 12 pound or something. I can link it, but yeah, I just love this. So this is my, my last Christmas stitching. Yeah, and I just finished this myself and it just sits on the shelf on my Christmas bookcase apparently now. I <laughs> it just occurred to me that all of those things are on the bookcase. But yeah, and this was one of the first peaches, the pieces, not peaches, that I used, um, that I did, sorry, that had like a load of back stitching but I'm really pleased with how it turned out especially because back stitching with metallic not super fun but I think it ended up I think it ended up all right so yeah how many times have I just like held it up and been but anyway okay so now at 55 minutes I will finally get to <laughs> show you the one finish that I have that I haven't actually FFO'd yet. So for my sister's birthday slash Christmas, basically I let her pick it on her birthday, which is in September, and then I've been stitching it up until Christmas to give it to her on Christmas. And I gave her a couple options that I thought she might like, and then she told me which one she liked the best. And that was this pattern, um, which is actually a set of three patterns by... Vlada X Stitch, I'm pretty sure. So basically they are the chemical symbols um, for several hormones then with flowers growing out of them. Um, kind of like a powerful mental health sort of piece. And so yeah, so this is the first one. So this is dopamine. Um, this is all the call for DMC and it's on just 28 count white. Weigart even weave and also I didn't leave myself a whole hell of a lot of uh margin on these but they're going to be finished in um just in hoops because my sister likes the look of um just like the wood hoop and then the the stitching so I basically the reason these aren't done is because I haven't actually got around to buying the wooden hoops for it yet which I will do after this video because I need a bit of a kick in the pants um, so I think this one, it, I'm going to actually get an oval hoop because I think that would look cool if one of them is like a bit of a different shape than the circle. Um, so that's dopamine. And then we have serotonin. So this one will be a bit of a, a bit of a bigger hoop, I think, um, because of this little leg up here. And then the last one is caffeine, because Lord knows we all need that. Yeah, I'm really, I'm pleased with these. This is my back. Yay. Um, yeah, so I'm finishing those for my sister. I'm going to get the frames for them, and then I will send them off to America, because... Unfortunately, I couldn't give them to her in person this year for Christmas because of the state of the world. So, Oh, I guess I have one more finish that's not actually a cross stitch finish. This is my first knitting finish since because I mentioned I was learning how to knit. Um, basically, because after watching a lot of Shiloh X Stitch MD's videos, I was like, I have to learn how to knit now. So now I know how to knit, kind of. Um, and the first thing that I made was this infinity scarf. I don't know if you can... So it's just garter stitch. But I've blocked it officially and like seamed it together. So here's my little scarf. 
and it like loops. I can wear it with my winter coat and I think it's really cute. I didn't use a pattern or anything. I basically just followed um, RJ Knits how to knit <laughs> tutorial <laughs> basically for just like how to cast on and then knit. So all of this is, is just knit stitch. I did, I think I did like 20 stitches on four millimeter needles. And I used this, this is the, what the skein looks like. It's King Cole Splash DK. It's just 100% acrylic in the colorway Apricot. And I just think it's really cute. I like the speckles on the yellow, which you can see kind of works up like this. So it's like self-striping, obviously. But I thought it was really good to work with for like my first ever project, especially to like be acrylic and stuff because I didn't want to spend too much money on my first project because it might have turned out very badly so but I'm really pleased with it actually and so my next thing I'm working on with that is I'm making a little ear warmer that matches it um with the rest of the this I bought two skeins so the rest of the first skein I'm using for that and then hopefully I'll just have this left over for stash maybe I'll make some mittens I don't know get crazy we'll see I guess this is kind of getting into my whips but for the ear warmer um I haven't really done very much on it so I don't really think it's worth showing but I'm trying to learn how to do rib stitch for that so it's going to be like ribbed across this way and then I'm gonna make a little I don't even know but like it make it look like a bow basically I'm gonna like pull a little bit in here and do like a little patch over the top so anyway hopefully that'll be cute in the next video I'll probably be able to show you actual progress on that but I've only really just cast it on so I don't really think it's worth looking at. Okay whips. So I'll start with my oldest whip first I guess. Um, I only really have four whips right now because I finished like five things over Christmas and I just haven't started <laughs> anything but my new year new start but I have plans to start things which I'll talk about. Um, at the end of the video so my first whip that I've started is by oh and I haven't ironed these I probably should have done but alas so this is long dog samplers quilted bees oh I just love this it like matches the colors of my living room so perfectly so that's part of why I want to do it like our living room is like orange and this mustard and this light pink which you will, one of my, my new year new star is also these colors. So, um, but I just think this is really pretty and I wanted to do a long dog um, because floss tube. And I'm doing this on 32 count white Belfast linen from Zweigart. So this was my first project on linen um, that I mentioned earlier that I hadn't finished yet. So, oh, I have a string hanging out of it. Okay, ignore the string. I. <laughs> So I'm using this on Pattern Keeper. I figured out how to get it downloaded on Nico's Kindle Fire that we got him for Christmas. Um, so I've been doing that with this. This is how far I've got. So this is starting in the upper left. I finished this block, which is, I don't know if you can see, but it's like two colors made to look like gingham. I live and breathe for it. Um, and then this, I've actually finished this block because all of this part is white space. So this actually is finished, even though it doesn't look good. And then I've started on this next one, which is gonna be like little um, flower motifs. But this is how far I got the other day before I started on my new year, new start. So yeah, so this is longer samplers, cool to bees. And I will be happy to have that done in 2021 is one of my goals but we'll see it's a long dog so it's very big I mean it's 211 by 220 so that might be a bit bold that I've said that I wanted to finish that but we'll see and I'm just using the DMC conversion I think for that because I think it actually calls for gas but I didn't feel like I was ready for hand dyed threads at this point that I started this yeah here's the there's the DMC colors. I just have it carded up, but they are beautiful. Oh, very pretty. I'll be looking forward to getting back to that. Um, my next oldest whip is, oh, and I say that, but like these are all from this year. <laughs> um, man, they don't tell you when you make a floss tube that you just suddenly have stuff everywhere. 
what was I saying? My next oldest whip is um, another stitch along. This is the one that I have not finished. <laughs> um, even though I think the, the last pattern was actually released on, on Christmas, Christmas day, actually. Um, so this is the Owl Forest Embroidery 100 Owl Sal. And again, I have an iron bow. So I've done basically the top part <laughs> and that's it. I absolutely love this. I love owls. Owls are like my favorite animal. I just, they speak to me. I don't know why. Maybe because of Archimedes and Sword in the Stone always reminded me of myself. If you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll, I'll see if I can like insert a little thing, but I don't want Disney to copyright claim me. But anyway, basically once I saw um, Rocio, Pocahontas was stitching this I was like oh okay well I have to get that um so this was a free mystery stitch along by Al Forest Embroidery um and I'm I've used the DMC conversion um which you know Pocahontas mentions this in one of her videos Rocio said that um something about the DMC conversion of this doesn't it doesn't really match quite what the hand dyed floss that owl forest because they dyed their own for this project it's it's not an exact conversion the dmc version is a bit more muted a bit less crazy because so because i think so in the actual owl forest version this is supposed to be like variegated um orange and green and it looks a lot more like variegation throughout rather than just this one part is orange um but I, i'm not mad at it Maybe in the future, though, if I was going to do another Owl Forest pattern, which I'd like to because I love their designs, I might would splurge and get their floss, which they're in Russia. So that it is a bit of a splurge, but, but I think it would be worth it. But yeah, anyway, I'm really pleased with this um, and I need to get back to it. Uh, I will definitely be finishing this this year because I want it to hang up kind of by my actually I think I wanted to hang on the opposite part of the Harry Potter wall because owls, Harry Potter, perfect. So yeah, um, Rosie has finished hers and it looks absolutely gorgeous. So I am looking forward to having this done, but uh, it is so pretty. Um, and this is 32 count Belfast linen in limestone. It's the called for. I don't have a full picture of the pattern because it was a mystery, um, but I will flash it up on the screen since I think it's all released now, so. Um, okay, my next one, this is my last sort of like crisp, I just keep my projects in these little things from Amazon that other people talk about because I feel like if I enter the world of the project bag, I will never come back and we can't be spending seven zillion dollars on project bags. So for right now, I'm keeping myself to these plastic ones, but maybe one day I will have the beautiful quilted project bags that other people have. Um, Cause they, they just seem like a drug to me. Like if I get one project bag, I'm like done for life. So this was from the Ultimate Cross Stitch Christmas issue 2019, because I actually have the printout in the bag. <laughs> So this is by Doreen Jones. Um, she does a lot of patterns for them. And this is, let me hold it like this together. So it's this, it's called Round Robin. And this is like really cute wreath. Um, and I'm planning to finish it just like how it's shown here in the hoop with the pom-pom trim. I already ordered. So X Ju Designs, who I got the trim for for Hello Dear, I ordered this green. <laughs> This exact green um because I got it's the same color as maybe the lighter green in this part of the wreath or something like that but yeah I, I think this is really cute and but it's actually a lot of stitching um in all of this because like all of this part is stitch but it is I think the lightest two greens are actually both tent stitch so they're only like a half cross but there's like, there's some other specialty stitches. I mean, there's some French knots in these, um, I think mixed with smear crosses and then back stitching, obviously and everything, but I think it's really pretty. So I have made like a, a medium start on this and I'm doing this on just a 28 count white even weave from Swigart. Boring, but, um, 
I wanted it to basically I just wanted it to look like the model so this is how far I've gotten I think it's really pretty though um, but I finished the little Robin. I, normally I wait to backstitch until the end, but he was just so cute. I wanted to see him with his little eyes and his little legs. And I actually have my Hello Dear <laughs> um, needle minder on this project because I was like, another Christmas Robin. They should be together. So yes, this is how far I've gotten. I'll come back to this probably, I don't know. I mean, it's more winter, I guess, than Christmas, but it's just not speaking to me to stitch on this right now. So I might save this for either later on in the winter when it does speak to me or for next Christmas. Um, but I will be happy to have this hanging up. So I think it's gonna, when it's finished, it'll be like a nine inch circle. Um, she says to finish it with a, a nine inch um, hoop. So yeah, and I think the called for obviously was Ada, but I wanted to stitch it on even weave. So um, here are the threads. They're really pretty. They're also an absolute mess, but yeah they're, they're really pretty colors um I just got this thread card off of Amazon um and then I've like taped basically what the pattern symbol is for each color onto it because I have been using you probably saw it in the long dog project bag I had been using the DMC thread organizers, which have like the magnets already on them. And I got these magnet things to put on this, but the DMC ones already have the magnets on. But the problem is, is that because they're like cardboard, if you pull too hard to pull the thread off, you can like rip all the way through the cardboard. And I did that like four times and it was driving me nuts. So I went ahead and ordered these like plastic ones because at least I can't rip them. So yeah, so this is just the DMC. So then last, but certainly not least, is my new year, new start, which is, let me find, where'd the pattern go? Oh, it's already here. I had literally set it up for myself and I missed it. Um, so this is a very exciting project for me because, so like I said, in the last year, I've definitely graduated in difficulty of projects and in, you know, the kind of fabric I'm using and everything. So for my first start of the new year, I wanted to go all out. So I got my first hand dyed linen and all my, you know, over dyed threads. And I'm so excited about it. So this is Hand on Hands on Designs Tulip House. Oh, it doesn't look like it's glaring too much, yay. So I don't really want to take it out of the bag. As I mentioned earlier about the tulips, see, oh, look at how beautiful all of these are. Oh, I just love this. And I love the font that Kavi uses. I, I'm pretty sure this is a Priscilla from Chelsea and Priscilla's Stitching with the Housewives. I'm pretty sure this is based off of um, Priscilla's art and the Chalk for the Home series. Oh, but I just love it. They have one for every season, but I don't think I'm going to do the seasons just because this is the one that matches my living room and this is the one that speaks to me. So therefore, that's the one that I'm going to do. Oh, but I just love it. And I don't know if you can see, but like in the house, there's little tulips in the roof. Oh, mm. and I want to finish it just like this in like this kind of white distressed farmhouse-y kind of frame. I love farmhouse chic. That's like definitely my the house vibe I'm trying to curate I don't know how successful I am but I'm definitely trying you know um Chip and Joanna in Fixer Upper that's my vibe so this one is still in the queue snap because I was literally stitching on this this morning and all I've done is taken it out of the stand so like I'm not going to take it out of the queue snap because I only have a, a bit I mean it's a it's a fair start but you can see all of the part that I've done within this part of the Q snap. So, so this is my start. So I've finished home and then I've done this part of the tulip and then I'm moving down and I'm going to come back up or well, no back up this way. And it's like the first leaf and then I'm going to fill in the green and then I'm probably going to start on the house. I think, I don't know the, does anyone else have this where like you tell yourself that you don't need to or that you that you can't start on a part of a chart because you like don't deserve it yet? 
<laughs> sometimes I do that where I'm like whoa 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 you can't start on the spoon like on the um the tango stitch one for the kitchen one I was like oh, you can't start on the spoon yet like you you need to do the other parts first the spoon is the best part <laughs> So this one is like, part of me wants to be like, you can't do the house until the very end because you don't deserve it. But I do deserve it. New year, new start. So I think I'm going to do the house next. And then I'll probably fill up the tulip on this side. Yeah. And then I'll move down, I think. Oh, but I just love it. And I'm loving these threads. So it's the called for um, Weeks Dye Works and Gentle Arts. Um, and then... I'm not using the called for fabric because I think the called for is 32 count slate from hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie. And that's like not remotely available right now during COVID. So I managed to find um, some 30 count gunmetal by weeks at Patchwork Rabbit here in the UK. What a great store, Patchwork Rabbit. I first heard about it from Michelle. Um, Mama loves you, Juby, and then yeah, I've bought a, I bought things from them a couple of times. They have really fast shipping, so yeah. So this is this is the weeks. I don't know if you can tell, but it really is looking kind of chalkboardy. Um, let me see if I can. Oh my god, am I a full floss tuber now? Look, I have a board. Okay, yeah, that's better. So now you can see how without seeing right through it that it really is kind of giving that chalkboard feel. The gunmetal. I think it's a I think it's a good match. And I was looking on hands-on design and one of their other charts I think another one of the chalkboard series it actually calls for gunmetal so I was like oh okay good it'll work because I was worried that it would maybe be like too blue or something but it's actually good oh, I just love it I cannot wait to switch to stitch on this tonight we've been uh we've decided to do a three-day Lord of the Rings extended edition marathon so tonight is return of the king and i'm going to be just stitching away as aragorn slays some orcs and it's going to be great yeah so that's my last whip i don't have any stitchy kindness because this is my first video um other than to say that i've really enjoyed talking to people on instagram and you're all fabulous um yeah i'll go through my christmas stitchy haul now basically the two big things that I got for Christmas that are related to cross stitching and the reason I'm including this is because I haven't bought anything else since Christmas because this is so close to Christmas other than I kitted up Tulip House but I've already showed you this. I got a Lowry stand for Christmas. Yay! I had it was basically starting to drive me nuts <laughs> stitching on my so at first I was using hoops and then I kind of moved up to Q-snaps because I got really tired of hoops like making a bunch of creases that I could never iron out good enough. And I really like Q-snaps but then it was like sometimes it's just a faff to hold it. <laughs> How lazy is that? How lazy does that sound? But like I don't know. You know what I mean. So I really wanted to stand. I wasn't sure if I wanted a lap stand because I didn't know if I like wanted to sit on the stand while I was stitching so no way I kind of decided I might want a Lowry stand I watched some reviews and then talking to Sean she was talking about how much she loves her Lowry stand and I was like okay I'm gonna do it I'm gonna actually do it so Nico bless him got me a Lowry stand for Christmas um I will insert a picture of it here because it's all set up downstairs and I think I would probably die trying to carry it up these rickety old English stairs but I got the stand itself um just the the silver gray one not the they have a, a more advanced like platinum kind of version but I didn't need that one um and then I got the um, magnetic chart holder um and the the extension bar because our couch arm is like way too wide there is no way I would have even like literally my project would have been like over here and here I am if, if I didn't get that um so I got those two additional pieces for it because the way the Lowry stand works is like you can get the base stand but then there's a bunch of like expansion packs basically for the stand that are like you know the longer arm um and then uh, like an accessories thing where you could like hang threads from the light 
holder, um, which I think I'm going to eventually get. Right now, I, I'm sort of using it <laughs> in the video. Um, bear with me, the light's gonna change a bit. So this is what I got to go with it. It's one of the daylight bulbs I got stuff of Amazon and it like clips on to my Lowry and then it has three settings. So, uh, so it gets like really bright. Um, which has been really useful for Tulip House because that is some dark fabric. It's very hard to see the holes without it. Yeah, and it's USB um, chargeable. So like it like plugs in here and then there's the little USB end. So I just put it in my um, my iPhone charger. So I got that for my Lowry stand, but I think eventually I'll probably want to get a, a bit of a bigger light. Maybe that has some magnification in it, maybe for next Christmas, because we have to save up for things like that. But then at that point, I'll probably will get the light bar for the Lowry. But so far, I'm obsessed with using a floor stand. It is so nice not to like have my arms hurt and me to be like hunched over, because that was the other problem, is I was starting to like hunch while I stitched. And now I like sit back a bit more because it's already brought up closer to me, which is really good. The only thing is that it does scratch a bit, the stand. So I've had to now put a piece of felt in between the light and the actual bar because I was it was like scratching the bar. Um, and I was like, that's expensive. We spent way too much money on this for it to get like <laughs> scratched to high heaven. So yeah, so I put that on it. And, the, and it also kind of, I don't know, does anyone else, if you have a Lowry stand, how have you dealt with the whole tipping over element? Because basically I've been using an 11 by 11 Q snap on it. And I think the weight of it kind of like makes the, the stand tip a bit as I'm using it. So right now we've just put some, actually some board game boxes like on top of it, which is, and then it's been completely fine. Um, but I'm wondering if other people had like another solution. Cause I know they have, when you get the bigger frames, they have like the egg expansion thing where it basically balances out if you had like a larger frame, like an 11 by 17 or one of the roller frames or something like that. But yeah, I wonder if there's like a better way to weight it down than what I'm doing. But other than that though, I absolutely love it. I've been using a grime guard with it just because Sean mentioned that hers kind of was starting to mark some of her fabrics. So just to be safe, I have a grime guard between the actual clamp and my Q-snap, but absolutely greatest Christmas present. And then I'll do this one next. So my supervisor for my PhD, which is basically like my advisor, the professor who, you know, gives me feedback, that kind of thing. For Christmas, she bought me this Jane Austen embroidery book. How sweet is that? And it's by... Jenny Batchelor and Allison Larkin. And Jenny Batchelor is actually, I, I know her work a bit. She's an 18th century like history scholar and she does dress history, textile history and all that. And so they got together and, and in her spare time, I think she embroiders um, and they made this book of patterns for like sort of like a modern 18th century embroidery thing like Jane Austen. They are just the most beautiful patterns and it's such a thoughtful gift as well because it's like both history themed but also the fact that Bronwyn knows that I stitch now and everything is just oh, I just love it like look how pretty these are so I definitely want to make some of these patterns um oh, I just love it and also it'll give me a chance to like practice my embroidery stills because I have embroidered before but I not anything that I could show you like I'm talking about when I was in like middle school or something like that. So it would be really nice to be able to do this. Maybe like a table runner or something. I feel like our dining table could use. Yeah. I, I have that problem where like I always think that there's something else our house could use. Um, but anyway, I can't wait to make something out of this. So thank you, Bronwyn, if you're watching this. And then the last big thing that I got for Christmas was my grandma with the help of my mom, surprised me with a sewing machine. So that's how I made the little nutcracker pillow, which I, I guess I sort of foreshadowed this earlier. But yeah, so it's a Brother LS14S. Again, hard to carry the sewing machine up the stairs because it's living in the living room right now because I don't quite know where I'm gonna put it. 
in the house because you can't see this but over here in the office it's also our guest bedroom so there's like a bed I can't really put it in here um my office doesn't really function quite as a craft room hopefully one day when we have a bigger house I will have a craft room but for now I have various boxes in different places of the house that have things in it but anyway I'm trying to learn how to sew a bit I've used a sewing machine before with my mom because like I said my mom made us clothes and stuff when I was little um and she's still she's quilted all that jazz so I have made this pillow and then I've also got the materials basically to do some like patchwork things to practice eventually being able to make a quilt if that makes any sense so looking through my readly I went to some sewing magazines and I saw a couple of patterns for things like like a like a pot holder that's like uses you know three different pieced fabrics or whatever and a a pin cushion that has the same kind of piecing effect and my plan is maybe next weekend or something like that I'll dive in and try to see if I can make one of those and like practice using some of the techniques and things like that but um making the pillow actually went very well I'm very pleased with this pillow so yeah I just seamed this on the and I flipped it inside out and I stuffed it with just like polyfill and then I whip stitched the bottom which is not the most even whip stitching but like I said, the chenille is going to go around it, so it'll be fine. But yeah, so I'm hoping to start sewing those um, next weekend. I had to get all the kit <laughs> for the sewing machine. So um, the other part of the Christmas gift was my mom got me um, some different feet for it. So I got a walking foot and uh, an overlocking foot. So I surged the edges of my new fabric and the Owl Forest fabric, which it's not perfect because the machine that I have doesn't actually have a surge stitch overlocking stitch thank you um so I had to just use like the highest zigzag one with the overlocking foot but it worked it looks fine it does the job yeah I'm looking forward to starting those projects being able to do more pillow finishes in the future other types of finishes looking forward to quilting might make myself a little skirt get crazy I don't know but anyway that's my big exciting Christmas presents and then of course I got like a new Q-snap to go with my new stand, the 11 by 11 one, a new grime guard to go with that Q-snap, you know, just little things like that. Also, Nico helped me do a little advent floss calendar thing after I heard Michelle talking about hers in one of her videos a couple months ago that she was going to do that and the Patrick Rabbit was sending her like floss for it. I went ahead and found a series of overdyed threads that all had like Christmas based names so like Hollyberry or Santa or whatever and I ordered those and then I made Nico put them out of order and like bag them up for me to open on the day we alternated them with chocolate so I think I got like 10 or something like that but that was that was a really cute stitchy present along with some needles but the Lowry stand was the big thing and the sewing machine so that's kind of the extent of my haul I haven't ordered anything like this week or anything I guess I just want to talk about my plans for 2021 and for the channel so my stitching plans in general I likely I have a few patterns that I know for sure I want to do in 2021 so Sally at Caterpillar Cross Stitch is going to put out the last two of the trees in the Hello Dear Hello Festive Tree series. I don't actually know what, maybe Festive Trees. I don't know quite what she's calling them. Um, but Hello Petal, which is the spring one, and then Hello Sunshine, which is the summer one. Hello Pumpkin came out last year, or maybe it's two years ago now, like last, last year. And I haven't done that one yet, so I'll have to do all three. Um, but I want to have, like I said, I want to have them all on the easel in their different seasons. So Hello Petal, I think, releases in February. So I know for sure I'll be getting that. And then Hello Sunshine is, I think, April. And then once I finish that, I'll start Hello Pumpkin, probably closer to when it's like actually fall time. I probably will be starting the Made to Create Sal with Caterpillar Cross Stitch as well. But I want to wait until I see the first release for it just because that's what I did with Hello Dear. I don't know. There's something about a mystery style where like I like the element of not knowing what's coming next, but then also I'm concerned that it's going to get to the end and I don't like it anymore. 
<laughs> is that weird to other people feel that way so anyway I want to see the first release and then I'll know for sure and then I'll probably I'll probably get it I'm like 85% but I just want to see first um and that is supposed to start at the end of this month and then other things I know I want to stitch Mm, well, definitely in the fall, I'm going to stitch um, Quaker Pumpkins by Hello from Those Matthews because come on. And I didn't get my hands on it when everyone else is doing it. I know Georgia Girl Stitching did it, Megan, and I didn't get a hold of it then because I was like, well, I don't know. And it was like sold out everywhere. And this year, this year it's going to happen. I think that was the main ones that I know are on the horizon and then other things I think I have a lot of things in my wish list a lot of things in my cart I will probably have many other stars <laughs> than what I've just said but things that are our overarching plan for 2021 I know I want to do those I, I'm thinking about doing so you know how Erin to Martini Stitcher has like projects that she works on on particular days like like holiday kind of things you know she has like an anniversary project and a birthday project and whatever I kind of want to do that I mean I don't necessarily know that it would be something that I would work on on the same day every month or something like that, but just like the idea of having projects that I could associate with something special. Um, so I'm thinking about doing a anniversary start in the beginning of February for Nico and I's anniversary, which is uh, Lindy Stitches chart. And it's like these two owls kind of like leaning against each other. And it says, um, you were there, I forget the rest or something like that. And it's just really special and I already said I love owls and I don't know I just it would be nice to make something that's you know about us I don't know so I'll probably do that but other than that my main plan for 2021 is to start this channel and that's why I'm filming this I wanted to start early on in the year so I kind of jumped in on the whole new year new start whip parade whatever I wanted to start now while you know strike while the iron is hot and why I actually felt like I could do it before I get to July and I get scared and I never do it my plan at the moment is monthly uploads because I am a I'm not a monogamous stitcher but I'm monogamous within the stitch what I want when I want so I usually have, you know, several whips going at one time, but then when I get a feel for one, I will stitch that until I feel done with it, which is usually when it's done. <laughs> so I don't think if I did like weekly videos or something, I would have that much to show you every week. So I think monthly is probably best, but if it gets in the future and suddenly I have 40 whips now, um, then maybe we'll have <laughs> a different discussion then. But I've actually really enjoyed filming this. If you have watched this long into the video, thank you so much for joining me for my very first Floss Tube video. I'm so excited to be a part of this community. Everyone seems so kind and lovely, and I'm happy to share something that I love with all of you who love it too. If you liked this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I'm going to try to post monthly and give me a follow over on Instagram. I tend to update on my progress as time goes on. I really love DMing people, responding to messages, chatting, all that. So that's Evelyn Across the Pond. Anything that I've talked about in this video, I'll try to link in the description. Try to um, mention people that I've shouted out. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.